what we have here is my latest invention, which uh, is a Christmas tree lights with an electronic fuse in the plug. Most Christmas tree lights have inside the plug two little tiny fuses, and when they, a person puts too many lights in a string, they hook them end to end, a fuse blows in the first one. And to get those little devils out of there, I mean, without losing your religion is a, is a real task. So what I did is I come up with this electronic device here, and I had a company make this for me over in uh, China, and this is special, it's not on the market, it's never made before, it's by my, the, by my own recipe here. Uh, I've got a patent on it. Now, I will show you, for example, this is just a little string, just show and tell. Now I'm gonna put a, a load on there. That, that string will just burn all day long without a problem. Now, if I hook all of these lights up here to it, end to end, oops, that's too much. Do you see that? It blew. I had too much, so I got to remove the load. And then I got to remove the power. And I count to five, one, two, three, four, five. And instead of changing fuses, I just put the power back on and I'm back in business again. So I don't have to worry about changing fuses any longer because my electronic fuse takes over. So you want to do that again? We can do that again. We just put the, put the load on there. Oops, that blew the fuse it's just too, too much. And it'll stay like that all day long, not any problem, until I shut the power off. And then I got to shut the power off and I got to take a couple deep breaths and I come over here and I turn the power back on again and presto, the lights are back on again and it stays back on, stays on. Okay. How will you bring this to market? Well, I've got um, my uh, licensee for Staylit is uh, chomping at the bit for this and he wants it uh, as a big item for 2011. So um, this is something that um, I have to hurry up and get it done because time's a wasting. Otherwise, it'll be 2012, and I'd rather have it done 2011 for 2011. <laughs> what I have here is my first liquid crystal display using my molecular alignment. Now, this is all sealed in glass, and the liquid crystals at that time could not tolerate any high temperature above 45 degrees centigrade because it would just go to pot. Couldn't stand moisture or anything. But what I did is I sealed this all up, put my alignment, my molecular alignment in there by vacuum depositing at an angle, uh, glass, and then sealing it. And then I put a tube on here and I poured liquid crystals in this tube and pulled a vacuum on it and all the air come out then after a while and then I torched it off and you can see the liquid crystals are still in that little tube there. I don't know if you can see that or not. But um, let me get something here. These are liquid crystals. What are liquid crystals? Right here. What is it? Looks like milk, don't they? Mm -hmm. It's a chemical. But uh, it looks like milk. Anyway, this is the very first. You have to have polarizers on here and you put a voltage to it. But uh, that's the, the little eights. Uh, you can make any number out of it. You know how that works. Over here is uh, my thermal printing wafer, the very first thermal printing wafer I ever made. I save all of these things. Here it is. Right here. And the elements are on the edge of the glass. And the electrodes are down the side. And you can stack these up or you can make a long, big, long thing. Now, what they've done for the, um, a lot of uh, things, handheld uh, things, this is uh, all the thermal printing elements along here. Um, 
As you can see, I'm a pack rat. I save everything. I don't have what I'm looking for there. No. Anyway, I was looking for my plasma display. I don't have it here. But the uh, plasma display, I did that. Uh, and I have that around somewhere. But these are the things I'm the proudest of. You had asked me that question, what am I most proud of? And I would say that these two inventions here, the thermal printing and the um, liquid crystal display. Now, the plasma display, I hold. Some pictures of those, so. Okay. The, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, you've heard of the plasma TV? Yeah. Well, the pixels on a plasma TV are made by my 1974 patent. But, of course, I, I take no credit in that. It just happens to be that it was funny that when I saw how the pixels were made, I said, hey, I got a patent on that in 1974. Of course, patents expire, you know, 